Hi. Do you get confused with the sound th and t? Perhaps you say thank you very much instead of thank you very much. Or maybe you get confused with th and d. You might say, we went to that new restaurant, then it was so good, we went there again. Of course, what you should have said was, we went to that new restaurant, then it was so good, we went there again. You may have got so used to getting it wrong, that it's very difficult now to get it right. So, you know what your problem is, but you just can't seem to get it right. Well, today, I'm going to help you to say these sounds and then practice them in minimal pairs and then in naturally spoken sentences that you definitely won't find in any course book. So that by the end of the lesson, you can say goodbye to all those problems. So come on, come this way. So let's start with the sound th. Well, firstly, the sound is unvoiced. Th, th, th. There should be no sound coming from here, only from your mouth. Now, this sound is called a dental fricative. What does that mean? Well, it means that with this sound, you restrict the air flow by pressing the tip of your tongue lightly against the inside edge of your top front teeth. So the air just comes out between your tongue and teeth, like this. Watch, listen and repeat. Remember, there's no voice. This sound can come at both the beginning and end of words, like this, third and fourth. Got that? So now it's time to move on to the t sound. This sound is also unvoiced, but the tip of the tongue is further back and just taps on the alveolar ridge, which is just behind the top front teeth. However, this is a plosive. And what does that mean? Well, it means there is a build-up of air pressure before the sound is released. But immediately after the release, the plosive sound is finished. So it's a very quick sound, like this. Watch, listen and repeat. Remember, it's unvoiced, and this sound comes at both the beginning and ends of words, like the words night and time. So now it's time for some minimal pairs practice. Watch, listen, and repeat. Thin, tin, thin, tin, thank. Tank, thank, tank, three, tree, three, tree, fourth, fort, fourth, fort, north, naught, north, naught. Okay, now let's move on to the sound th. Well, unlike th, which is unvoiced, this one is voiced. But it's still called a dental fricative because the sound is produced by friction by restricting the airflow through the tongue and the teeth. So the only difference is that this sound, th, is voiced. The tip of your tongue is in exactly the same place for both sounds. Remember, 
you press the tip of your tongue lightly against the inside edge of your top front teeth so that the airstream is just able to flow in between tongue and teeth, which produces the friction. Now, try turning your voice on and off like this. Watch, listen and repeat. Th, 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 th. Good. Let's move on to d. This is voiced and it's also a plosive like the sound t. Remember, a plosive is when there is a buildup of air pressure before the sound is released. The only difference between the two sounds t and d is that t is unvoiced and d is voiced. Simple. Remember, the tip of the tongue taps the alveolar ridge, which is immediately behind your upper front teeth. So you block the airstream with the tip of your tongue on the alveolar ridge. Then the air is released with the sound. Remember, because it's a plosive, it's a short sound, because it's a bit like an explosion. Watch, listen and repeat. D, 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 d. It, remember, it's voiced, so you should be feeling that vibration down here. D, d, d. Now it's time for those minimal pairs. Here goes. Watch, listen and repeat. There, 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 then, 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 than, dan, than, dan, though, do, though, do. Breathe, breed, breathe, breed. Worthy, wordy, worthy, wordy. Okay? Don't forget, if you need more practice, just go back and do it as many times as you need to. So, now here's my short conversation. Remember, by practicing this conversation and saying it exactly like me will help you to overcome your pronunciation problems. Listen, watch and repeat as many times as you need to. Hello, Jenny. Uh, yes. It's Jane. Oh, hello, Jane. You will never guess what's happened this time, Jen. No, what is it this time? Well, you know Dan, who lives at number 43. Um, you know, the really good looking one. Looks like Daniel Craig from the James Bond movies. Oh yes, I know. I thought he lived at number 38. Oh, never mind, go on. Well, Jen, he's had a bad accident. He borrowed my ladder, you know, the really big one, because he wanted to clean his windows. You know, those ones right at the top. Uh, yes, go on. Well, they are filthy, Jen, honestly. Have you ever noticed them? No, Jen, can't say I have. Go on. Well, he was cleaning the windows when the ladder slipped and smashed right through his greenhouse. Oh no, what happened to him? Well, he was left dangling from the balcony, shouting, help, help. But well, what did you do? Well, I tried to help him, but instead of grabbing his ankles, I grabbed onto his trousers. I ended up pulling them right off. And you'll never guess what. What? 
Well, there he was, just dangling there. What, with no pants on? No! He was wearing a pair of those really tight ones. What do you call them? Oh, you know. No, I don't know. Um, budgie smugglers. And they had a picture of Rudolph the reindeer on them with a nose. They kept lighting up. <laughs> All I could see was his bottom with a nose that kept blinking on and off. So what happened to him? He's my new Christmas decoration. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. For more pronunciation, just go here. Until then, love and peace.